Fractions. Lesson 3. Simplifying fractions with greatest common factor, or GCF. First, let's review. What is a fraction? A part or equal parts of a whole object or set of objects. What is the numerator? The top part of the fraction that shows how many pieces you have. What is the denominator? The bottom part of the fraction that shows how many pieces the whole is broken into. Fractions with a larger numerator than denominator are called improper fractions. And fractions that have a whole number and a fraction are called mixed numbers. When you multiply, you take a multiplicator, times it by the multiplicand, and get a product. Or, you take a factor and multiply it by another factor and get a multiple. These are important terms that you need to remember. Why do we need factors? You may want to find out what you have in common to help you make decisions if two things belong together. Mathematicians want things to be neat so things can be simplified or put in the lowest terms. Do you know your multiplication facts? If not, check out my multiplication videos. You can find them at the links below. If you need to know this content now, try using a multiplication chart to divide. Here's how. Notice these numbers are darker. These are your factors. Trace your factors from the top and the left until they intersect to find your multiples. Three times seven equals 21. Division is the inverse or the opposite of multiplication. Start by finding your numbers inside of the chart and trace your fingers out. Here's the number 10. 10 divided by 5 equals 2 or 10 divided by 2 equals 5. 2 and 5 are factors of 10. There may be more than that one set of factors. Start from the left to the right to find them all. Ten times one equals ten. Five times two equals ten. Two times five equals ten. And one times ten equals ten. In this little clip, Sunburst tries to find something in common with starlight. I don't understand. Starlight and I have known each other since we were foals, but that doesn't mean we have to be foals to hang out. I mean, it is surprising how well I get along with all of her friends, but she and I still have tons in common. Maybe you just need to remind her what those things are. Thinking about factors, you could always make a list of the factors that two things have such as you and your boyfriend or girlfriend.
One is a girl, the other is a boy. One has a mom and stepdad, the other have two parents. One likes to eat eggplant, and the other likes to eat pepperoni. But the important part is what comes in the middle. You're both humans, you could live in the same town, go to the same school, then you're members of the same club, and you watch the same TV shows. These are all important when it's talking about how you relate to one another, what you have in common. Commonality is another powerful, powerful technique to attract customers and be the biggest in the lake. You ever travel internationally? And you're, I went to Russia uh, a long time ago. I was sitting in Russia and you know, everyone's speaking a different language with different letters. Like you, you can't read or understand the thing that's going on. It's very intimidating until one person said one thing in English. And I was like, what? Who, who's that? I walk over to the guy, he's from Persephone. Persephone, New Jersey. I'm like, oh my God, I think you're my brother. Like, this is so awesome. I'm from, I grew up in Putin. You know, I'm from Putin. Oh my God, you know, we're talking. Commonality, we bonded like this. We are designed, people, to look for commonality in, in situations. When we go to a networking event, we look for stories so that the person's sharing so we can share our story right back. It's a look for a bond of commonality. We're all wired that way. Let's find the greatest common factor. You need the greatest common factor in word problems when you see these words. Largest, greatest, most combined, breaking into groups. You also need the greatest common factor when simplifying fractions. Let's try. Shelby is making necklaces. She has 12 red beads and 18 purple beads. If Shelby wants to make all the necklaces exactly the same with no beads left over, what is the greatest number of necklaces she can make? There's the word greatest. What is the greatest common factor of 12 and 18? What are the factors of 12 and 18? One times 12 is 12. Two times six is 12. Three times four is 12. Four times three is 12. Six times two is 12. And 12 times one is 12. When number pairs repeat, you only need one set. One, two, three, four, six, and 12. Two times nine is 18. Three times six is 18. Six times three is 18. And nine times two is 18. Every number has a factor pair of one and itself. So one times eight is 18 and 18 times 1 is 18. Remember you only need one set. Now let's put our factors in order. For 12 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. For 18 we have 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Put them on top of each other. Strike 
circle the factors that are the same or common. One, two, three, and six. Just like with number lines, the greatest number is the one to the right. The greatest common factor of 12 and 18 is 6. One more time, what were those steps? First, find the factors. Then, list the factors in numerical order, or 1, 2, 3 order. Then, put your lists on top of each other. Circle the common factors. The common factor on the right is the greatest or GCF. But wait, there's another way. If you have heard of prime factorization, I'm not talking about Skynet and the Terminators. Prime is the number that can be divided evenly only by one or itself. A starting list of prime numbers are 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Factorization is breaking it up into numbers that can be multiplied together to get the original number. To get the prime factorization to GCF, create factor trees only dividing the number by prime numbers. Make a list of your prime factors. Circle the prime factors that are the same from one number to the other number and multiply one of each set of circled numbers to get the greatest common factor. Let's try prime factorization for 14 and 16. If we divide each number by 2, we would get a factor. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. 7 is already prime, but 8 can be divided by 2 to get 4, and 4 can be divided by 2 to get 2. Next, we put our lists on top of one another. Then, we circle the common factors. Our greatest common factor is 2. In our second example, you'll see something different. 24 divided by 2 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. 36 divided by 2 is 18, 18 divided by 2 is 9, 9 can't be divided by 2, but it can be divided by 3 to get 3. Now, let's put our factors on top of each other and circle the common ones. Our common factors are 2, 2, and 3. So our greatest common factor is 2 times 2 times 3. Our greatest common factor of 24 and 36 is 12. When we do this to simplify fractions, find the factors of the numerator and the denominator. Put these factors in order, place them on top of each other, circle the common factors. The greatest common factor is the number on the right. Then, divide both numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor. Let's try. Find the factors of the numerator and the denominator of 9 twelfths. List the factors in numerical order. Put your lists on top of each other.
circle the common factors. The common factor on the right is the greatest common factor. Now divide both numerator and denominator by the GCF. 9 divided by 3 and 12 divided by 3 is 3 fourths. For extra practice, look on your Google Classroom page or follow the link in the description below.